Hi, my dear friends, it is Finavar and welcome to my studio. In this video, I want to show you how to make collage project and it's going to be based on nice selection of the products from uh, Finavar 2020 uh, Autumn Collection. So stay with me and enjoy and get inspired. My collage is supposed to be inspired by the urchin and shells also, I want to include a lot of steampunk um, vibe into that uh, collage, so um, it should be an interesting mixture. To begin with, I'm going to use my uh, Art Extravagance uh, Crushed Ice Effect Paste, which is completely transparent based on gel and it contains wonderful um, small glass beads and delicate silver glitter, which is going to add amazing shine and a glaze effect. You can easily apply this uh, kind of paste through the stencil even, even if the design is quite delicate and the easiest way is to just use the silicone brush or a palette knife and to spread it evenly over the stencil. The gel paste of the product is going to resist so uh, if I'm going to add some spray paints or some uh, watered down acrylic paints on the top uh, the pattern will be still quite visible and the textures will reveal beautiful details. After the paste is applied, I clean my uh, stencil and then I dry everything with the heat gun to make sure it will be easy for me to work on the next steps. My next layer, uh, these are going to be some textures created with fabric tapes and maybe some masking tapes, things that you usually have on hand uh, at home. I try to uh, stick uh, several strips in the middle, some of them horizontally, some of them vertically, to create like the beginning of the composition, the place where I'm going to put my focal point and then only the edges of the tapes will be visible later. When everything is uh, secure and dry, I can start working on the main composition. I have uh, my heavy body gel on hand. This is Art Basics product I made for Prim Marketing. It's super heavy, transparent gel medium, which is great glue for dimensional projects. I'm going to use it to attach the biggest and the heaviest elements to my canvas. And because it's very, very thick, everything will stay in place perfectly. I'm going to use my heavy body gel to attach the uh, biggest uh, parts of the composition. I'm starting with the keyboards or the HDF elements, which are similar to cogs or clock parts. And then I'm going to follow with um, mold made elements such as uh, stems I broke into pieces and uh, the next parts which are going to build the dimension. Every time when I apply the heavy body gel, I put quite large amount of it and I press down my elements so uh, they are going to stick properly and it's going to be easier for me to work on the next steps. Step by step, I'm adding the elements. Then um, I will be working on the smaller uh, bits of the composition. I'm going to look for the tiny elements that are going to fit. And as you can see, on some point, I started filling the empty gaps under the embellishments with the piece of cardboard. This is a very easy trick and it helps you to keep the, um, well, the bigger parts uh, in the right position or to simply give enough support to your embellishments when um, the shape is not really easy to glue on. Soon the main part of the composition is ready. I added some uh, metal cogs, I added um, a flower and uh, some plastic elements as well. And then I dry everything with a heat gun to make sure it's going to stay in place before I will put more elements on. It's good to dry from different angles, so your heavy body gel will chance to dry even very close to the bottom of the composition. When you work on the dimensional, multi-layered and 
complicated collage, it's good to check with your focal point from time to time how much space you really have got left. So that's why I put my pocket watch on the project and check what is really visible and what will be the final look. At this stage, I'm looking for the smaller bits and pieces, such as shells or smaller mechanical parts or some mold made elements. And I try to fill the empty spaces and to make the composition look really full and dimensional. At the last stage, when I'm happy with my composition, I'm gluing the pocket watch on the top and then again, uh, I use my heat gun to dry everything completely so I can work on the next steps. Once the big elements are securely attached, now I can work on the small bits and pieces and details such as pearls or one of my favorite additions to uh, compositions like that, uh, art stones and mini art stones. These two art ingredients are lovely, delicate, lightweight prills. Uh, you can stick on your composition to add extra texture, or if you prefer, you can mix them into 3D gel or soft gel to create a textured paste. Uh, for me, the best solution today is going to be uh, at attaching them using a bit of soft gel and sprinkling them in the selected part of my collage. To make your work easier and to get the best results with art stones and mini art stones, I think it is the best to take the small brush and uh, some kind of soft glue. For me, it is soft glue gel and then put quite generous amount of the gel in the selected places and then simply sprinkle the art stones on the top. When you tap off the excess, uh, the art stones are going to stick nicely and then you can dry everything together with this lovely texture and um, it's going to stay permanently in that place. And uh, this way you can work on um, coloring or spraying uh, or adding the wax. The big advantage of the art mediums I created uh, is the thing that they work really well with the heat gun. So, uh, I can dry my heavy body gel and my soft gel with the heat gun to speed up the creating process. And this way I can start working on the next steps uh, without making uh, huge breaks in my work. Just before uh, starting coloring of the project, I have to glue in my urchin. So a beautiful shell I found in the shell shop and that fits perfectly inside of the pocket watch. I think this is just lovely combination, very inspiring. And I used my heavy body gel to attach it in the right place and decorate it with the small metal star. Before I'm going to put the paints on, I have to add the primer to make sure all my plastic and all my metal elements and also and the urchin, they are going to accept the paints in easier way and it's going to be uh, easier to use lighter colors on the top of the darker parts. The best solution in this case is to use white heavy gesso uh, from Art Basics and to put one nice coat on the top of everything, trying not to lose too much of the detail and then um, dry everything with the heat gun so our primer is going to stick nicely and will be completely dry. Once you're working on a very detailed project, you don't really want to put too much gesso at once because that may take away a lot of wonderful textures and details. So. When your gesso is dry, you can put another thin coat on the top to make some parts of the project whiter. And this way you're going to get much nicer results than trying to paint with a thick coat from the very beginning. Once I have my uh, embellishments more or less white, uh, I can focus on adding colors to the project. And my first choice is uh, Prussian Blue from uh, Liquid Acrylics Art Alchemy Collection. 
and uh, I'm going to use it with a lot of water to create delicate, uh, transparent blue shade around my um, group of embellishments. It's going to uh, it's going to remind us the ocean or the um, lake uh, this uh, special steampunk creature is floating in. So the most important thing is to be very delicate with this uh, Prussian blue color and adding a lot of water to make sure the color is going to be diluted, transparent, really watery. Liquid acrylic paints are permanent and glossy and uh, a bit transparent after drying. So they're a great choice for making a permanent watercolor effect. As you can see, I'm uh, using a lot of uh, water in the uh, sprayer bottle to dilute the color to make the a blue shade float uh, because this way I'm going to get nicer and more delicate results. There's also a lot of water on my brush and I really use tiny bit of paint and a lot of water to get my um, blue color exactly the way I want it. I don't want my colors to mix so before I'm going to change the color palette to the shades of coral and pink and orange, I will dry my blue uh, water uh, color uh, completely. This way it's going to turn permanent and it is not going to mix with the next layers of paint. And this is a great trick when you are not completely um, sure and confident with your color placing. It's going to help you keep the things that you like safe before you're going to experiment on the top. I wanted my mysterious uh, water creature to be in soft, quite delicate colors with a tiny bit of rust in there. So I'm going to pick the um, uh, delicate color palette to start with. I'm uh, using crimson uh, liquid acrylic paint and I'm going to follow with coral, and nude, which are delicate shades of um, orange pink tones, and they're going to help me create a really interesting color palette on my um, collage. Again, I'm using the same trick very wet brush, a lot of water, and just a little bit of paint to make the uh, results look delicate and uh, very um, soft. And uh, from time to time, I spray extra water also on the collage. So the floating paints are going to go all in all the gaps and empty spaces in between the embellishments. Once I started painting, I realized that I am missing a bit of the dirty tone in the paints and I would like to add a little bit of shadow as well. So uh, on my palette you can see now ink black liquid acrylic which is going to make some parts of the composition a little bit darker, more grey because this color is also transparent paint so it's easy to add shading to your project using just small brush and water. I'm not in a hurry with picking my colors. I uh, take uh, shades of crimson and coral. Sometimes I make them a little bit uh, dirty with a touch of black as well. And patiently, step by step, I color all of my embellishments, the whole main composition that I was uh, creating using um, all the mold made elements and all the embellishments. I want to look for my more interesting color shades, so I try to experiment mixing some of the crimson with black or the coral with black, also adding a bit of the lighter nude color closer to the top of the composition to make this effect more dimensional, more dreamy, more soft and uh, ethereal. Once I think I'm uh, done with the painting, I dry everything completely with the heat gun to keep my composition uh, permanently painted and to be able to add extras on the top without any problem and uh, color mixing and blending without any control. Now, when the paints are dry, I can work on um, making some parts of the composition a little bit whitewashed and more dimensional, a little bit softer. 
And of course, the most important uh, thing to check is if the paints are really dry, because if they are not, uh, our gesso may get a little bit muddy. You can use the same gesso that we used for priming our composition, or if you have your white uh, matte acrylic paint on hand, you can use um, this product instead of gesso as well. The effect I want to get is the soft blending of my uh, steampunk urchin composition with the water around it. So I start uh, brushing a little bit of the white gesso all the way around the embellishments and a little bit overlapping on them as well. So there will be like blurry effect, so this soft line between dimensional and more flat part of the composition. Step by step, I go around the embellishments with a small amount of gesso on my brush and I try to make the uh, line, the edge of the composition a little bit softer. Once I'm happy with that, I can also add a bit of gesso on the tops of embellishments to highlight them, to create more dimensional look, to make the colors look softer. And this way I will uh, get mm, really lovely whitewashed effect. I'm drying my gesso and now I'm going to work with my acrylic paints on the blending. So I'm going to take a bit of my uh, basic um, coral pink tone on a little bit outside on the composition, almost creating like this soft pink halo around my floating steampunk urchin. This blending of colors, the pinks with blues, is a very important part for me because I really want to create natural, soft-looking uh, result instead of the sharp lines that you would get in your coloring book. So step by step with a bit of water and a very small amount of paint, I create this uh, lovely paint halo around my main composition and then I can dry it with the heat gun to make it permanent and continue on the finishing touches. After all the painting with gesso, some parts of my composition can be a little bit too white, so now I can bring back my liquid acrylic paints on the, the composition again, so composition of coral, crimson, nude, and maybe a little bit of browns as well, such as uh, burnt sienna, to make the colors more vibrant and more attractive. And of course, again, uh, the key is the small brush and a lot of water. I really want my uh, focal point, so the urchin, Pop. So um, I want to uh, make it look a bit different to the surrounding elements. Now I'm taking the same Prussian blue color, which I used for creating the ocean. And I add a bit of that around the urchin to create lovely dimensional, yet a little bit bluish uh, color palette on the top of it. This way I will get more contrast, I will have uh, this uh, part more visible and it's going to really nicely pop on the top of the pinks and browns I have in the main part of the uh, collage. It's time for the final assessment of the colors and I can see that I lost a bit too much of my lovely Prussian blue ocean color. So. Um, this time I'm adding a tiny bit more of uh, this um, delicate blue on the outside of the composition, close to the corners, to make sure there is really lovely contrast between the middle and the um, outside of my composition. Again, paint, water and brush, and then drying to make, it, uh, to make sure everything is permanent and ready to go. My paints are dry, so now it's the time to work on the highlights. And again, I'm going to use new product from my uh, 2020 autumn collection, and it is metallic wax in white pearl color. 
Metallic waxes are permanent after drying and resisting to water, great for finishing touches, so I would recommend to use them as the last products on your projects. Now I'm going to uh, use both my finger and the brush to highlight the details of my dimensional composition. My goal is to touch the tops of embellishments with this white pearly color, so it is going to make them more visible and more dimensional and also beautifully shiny. And if I can't get into some parts of the uh, dimensional composition with my finger, I can always use a brush as well to get a little bit deeper and touch the elements with um, just the right amount of the wax. White pearl metallic wax is very uh, saturated and shiny white, uh, perfect for different kinds of composition. Here is just adding this magical highlight and uh, once you will start applying it, you will see it is going to make all these textures pop. So it's perfect choice when you are looking for this uh, extra dimension and uh, a little bit of the glamorous look as well. Once I'm happy with the wax, I want to add more of the magical effect on the project and I'm uh, going to use products from the new collection again. The paste, which is uh, called um, Phoenix uh, effect paste with uh, beautiful chunky parts of glitter in it. And this paste is going to be my secret weapon when uh, I'm going to add magical halo around my steampunk urchin composition. I apply the paste simply with the brush. So uh, with the fittings I have to struggle a little bit with the biggest parts of the glitter. I would like to make sure they're going to stick in the right places. So um, I carefully pick uh, small amounts of the paste and then I just uh, dab it on the embellishments and a little bit on the background all the way around until I think it looks simply stunning and it is ready for drying. Paste is based on the gel medium and that means it turns completely transparent after drying. So what you see after, just uh, the natural beauty of the glitter or the glaze and the beads effect, and uh, it is completely permanent finish so you can touch it with your fingers. This is just great way of applying special effects without any glitter coming off. I can see that my composition looks very sweet, almost like cotton candy. So I uh, want to add a tiny bit of the steampunk twist to it as well in the last stage of my work. It's easy when you have uh, Art Alchemy Liquid Acrylics on hand. Again, I squeeze a bit of the paint on the palette and this time it is Burnt Sienna, so the shade of brown, and Carmine which is rusty red and using small brush I want to add a bit of that rusty tone on the top of the elements that look like metal parts such as big cogs or the pocket watch. This way my whole composition is going to have a little bit more masculine, more um, rusty twist. It's very addictive and it's hard to stop, but on some point you just have to proclaim it finish. And after adding those uh, orange, rusty and brown touches, I dry everything with the heat gun and I think this looks really beautiful and I will be proud to put it somewhere on my wall. I want to add more of the uh, watery glazy effect on the project and I'm uh, going to use one you know already, this is uh, Crushed Ice. A paste we used with the stencil and I want to put it on the top of the urchin to make it look like it is wet and covered with uh, a bit of sea foam and um, lovely uh, air bubbles as well so uh, it's going to attract a lot of attention 
So this is it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new about uh, Finovar uh, art alchemy and uh, ex art extravagance products and you feel inspired to create something at home. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like the video, it really helps a lot and uh, to share it with your friends who would be maybe inspired to create something as well. Please visit my website finavar.com, my Instagram accounts and also uh, my Patreon page. This video is done thanks to my Patreon supporters who are the best audience to work for and they are um, my huge encouragement to create more. If you would like to uh, take special exclusive classes every month, watch videos at your own time, you can consider joining me on Patreon. All the uh, information and the links to my social media and Patreon page are in the description. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Happy creating and see you soon.